Hi everyone, I hope you're okay, and I hope that the videos we keep uploading are helping you out. This is the sixth video, guys, where I'm tackling questions on electrodynamics. Please do expect a total number of 11 videos. Since the, since the worksheet I've compiled consists of 11 different questions. And all of these questions, guys, are extracted from past exam question papers. So it's very, very important for you to know how to tackle such questions. I strongly believe that it will give you an edge whenever you write your examination. So please do share the video to your peers so that they may have the same edge as well. And please, guys, do help us grow the channel by just subscribing. Okay. Uh, we are told that uh, a part of a simplified DC motor is shown in the sketch below. It's, a, it's part of a DC motor right, together. Uh, firstly, we have direct current uh, because we have DC, right? So if guys have direct current, the type of commutators that we use, they are called split ring commutator. We, we are using split rings since we are dealing with, 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 the, with, with direct current right, together. And the, and the type of device we are dealing with is a motor. Remember that, guys, motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. Okay. Uh, and since, guys, we are, since we are using a motor, uh, for us to determine either, either, either the direction of rotation, the direction of the magnetic field, or the direction of current, we are going to use the left-hand motor rule. Are you together guys we are going to use the left hand motor rule the first question uh, we are told that in which we are being asked rather that in which direction a to b or b to a is the current flowing through the coil uh, if the coil rotates anti-clockwise as indicated in the diagram below okay uh, firstly guys we are told that the coil is 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 is, is, is rotating anti-clockwise right uh, they want us to determine the direction of current we are going to use our left hand rule are you together firstly uh, since since the coil is, is rotating anti-clockwise if if i can take this side as my reference are you together that means my thumb will be pointing uh, downwards are you together and my my forefinger will be pointing from north to south like this uh, and, and hence the middle finger will be, will, be, will be just pointing in that direction over there. So this will be the flow of our current. Our current will simply flow like this. It will be consistent like that. Né? So we can now conclude that uh, the current will flow uh, from A to B. They want us to name the rule that uh, they want us to name the rule that we used to answer question ten point one point one. We simply applied the left hand motor rule. Left hand motor rule. The left hand motor rule. Okay. Uh, which component in in which component in the diagram must be replaced in order? for the device to operate as an AC generator. Uh, we must simply replace the commutators, are you together? Just replace, replace, split rings with slip rings. Remember that guys, slip rings only work for for alternating current and split rings only work for for for, for direct current né? so for us to have alternating current we must have slip ring commutators okay and then we are told that uh, an electrical device of resistance of 400 ohms is connected across an ac generator that produces a, a maximum emf of 430 volts uh, the resistance of the coil of the generator can be ignored. Okay, state the energy conversion that takes that, that takes place when an AC generator is in operation. Uh, generators, guys, convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. 
For motors, is vice versa. Are you together? Remember, it, I told you initially that motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy, but for generators, it's it's an opposite. Generators convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Now they want us to calculate the root mean square value of the current passing through the resistor. Remember that, guys, we will simply apply Ohm's law as well. Ne? I know that uh, VRMS is equal to the product of IRMX multiplied by the resistance. So VRMS is equal to IRMS times R. Are you together? And hence, and hence I RMS will be equal to VRMS all over the resistance. Remember that, guys. At the back of your for, of, of your question paper, there is there is an equation that says VRMS is basically equal to the maximum voltage divided by the square root of two. So that means my RMS voltage is basically equal to the maximum voltage divided by the square root of two. Uh, that's just 340 divided by the square root of 2. That's the value of our RMS voltage. We divide this by our resistance, which is just 400. And then we just go and punch our precious calculators to find the RMS current. Uh, 340 divided by the square root of 2. Uh, Three forty divided by the square root of two, and all divided by four hundred. This will simply give us a value of zero point six zero. Zero point six zero one. Yeah, zero point six zero MPS. So the the RMS current, our our root mean square current is basically zero point six zero MPS. That's how guys are supposed to tackle that question over there. So please do stay tuned and wait for more videos. Thank you.